Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video on Salesforce Bolt. Guys, in today's video, I'll show you how you can use the Refresh View API with your Lightning Web Component. So basically what this Refresh View API will do, whenever you are having a custom component on your record page or somewhere else, and whenever you are triggering a functionality, which will be changing the data in your standard environment as well, right? So what you can do is you can call this Refresh View API after that, just to give the standard components a signal that something has changed because of that custom component and now you have to change your view as well so basically that refresh view api will be refreshing the standard components as well to show the latest data from that lightning web component we have done this change in one of our previous video as well which was i think get record notify change using get record notify change also we did the similar kind of activity and today also we'll be doing the same example what we did for get record notify change for this refresh view APIs uh, using a custom lightning web component. All right. So let's start today's video guys. I'm Kapil, your host and you're watching Salesforce Bold. Okay, let's start today's video. Uh, so as I told you, we did the same functionality using get record notify change. So first let me show you the output like how it is going to be with this uh, refresh view API. Okay, so this is a uh, record page where I'm having a custom list view component. It is a data table basically which is having list of contacts. Okay, so what will happen now? Whenever you will be refreshing something in this contact list. So as you can see, this is having some inline editing. Okay. So if I'll update something using this inline editing, so the same changes needs to be updated on the standard page other components. For example, uh, in this scenario, the standard component is this contact related list. It could be any other standard component as well. For example, let's say if you're updating something in, con uh, something in account, maybe account site and industry. So if you're updating it from a custom lightning web component, then it should get updated here as well on the standard component. So for that also the functionality will be pretty same. So let me show you the output first. So here as you can see, uh, we are having contact 1 and 2 and you can see the same here as well, contact 1 and contact 2. If I'll update this one to 3 and this one to contact 4, okay. So I'm updating it in my lightning web component, okay. Now if I will click on save, so on the right side you will notice it will get updated on the related list itself with contact 3 and contact 4. So this we are doing using Refresh View API. Okay. Now let me quickly deploy the changes back so I can show you like how it is going to be without that API. Okay. So as I told you guys, we are having, we already did the similar functionality using one of the previous API which is get record notify change. So for today also we have used, this, used the same example. We have just slightly modified it. Okay. So what you can do is you can simply go to my blog for that previous example which is salesforcebold.com and search for refresh. Uh, refresh related list and record page using get record notify change. Here it is. So this is the example where we have created this related list data table and uh, we tried to update the contact related list using get record notify chain. Same thing I did here using refresh view API, right? But if you will search for this function right now, if you will Google this get record notify change. So that is already deprecated. You can see deprecated here. Here it is. But anyways, now as we are having refresh view API, so I think this is going to be the single API for everything for you guys. Okay. So whenever you need to refresh something, you can use that refresh view APIs. So for today's demo, let me quickly explain the code, like how I have created this data table and what I did to build this example. And also let me show you how it is going to be without that refresh view. Now on the same component, let's say I need to update it to contact one and contact two again. And I have clicked on save. 
So you can see the success message component, sub component is updated here, the custom one, but the standard one is still same. Now to see the updates, I need to refresh it once. And after refreshing, you can see the updated data here, right? Now let me show you what I did here. Okay, uh, by the way, I'll be having the complete code of it on the blog itself. So if you need the code, you can simply copy and paste it from the blog. So guys, for that, I have created one Apex class, which is contact controller. Here I'm having two functions. First is get contact to get list of contact. Okay, the based on the account ID. So it will be basically getting the related contacts. Second is to update the contacts from that list. So whatever updates I'm doing in the data table, I'm passing it to this function in an object, data object, and we are updating it from Apex itself. Okay, so that is the only part I have done in Apex side. This is pretty basic Apex functionality. Like if you are already working in LWC, you might be aware of it. If you're new in LWC, then I'll be having this code snipped on my blog. So you can simply, you know, visit the blog and uh, try to understand it one by line by line and feel free to copy it as well. Now in my component, let me go to HTML part first. So this is my component, which is con Contact list view. Okay, so here I'm having lightning data table here and uh, I'm rendering it uh, if the data is present or not. So that's why I'm having template if true here. So this is the same functionality what we are having in this function. So I have just copied it from here. So I have also copied this code from one of my code snip. I mean, that is the benefit of storing these code snips so that you can reuse it whenever needed. So for this demo, I have copied the exact code snip. So if you want, you can just take it from this component or the new block, what I'll be creating as part of this. So here I'm just having a data table where I'm uh, rendering contacts records basically. Okay, so this is a very basic data table structure. What you can find in any example, you just need to pass the data, mention the columns and what you need to do on the save button. Okay, then now on the JavaScript side, so JavaScript side, first I'm calling this get contacts to get list of contacts. Okay. I'm also having a refresh Apex method to refresh my custom uh, component over there. Show toast event to display the show, uh, toast message and uh, update contact to update the contacts. So here I have mentioned column like first name, last name, title, phone and email. These columns will be available in my data table itself. I'm getting the record ID using API record IDs. Okay, and here I'm having a wired function where I'm getting list of contacts based on the past record ID, which is going to be account ID. That means the data what we'll be getting here, it is going to be the related data of the specific account record. Now this is on handle save. So in handle save, basically we are updating field data based on the data inputs uh, over that data table. Okay, so to have the data table added table, you just need to mark this thing added table and it is going to be editable for you. So in my case, I'm just having first name and last name editable. So I have passed the editable fields and this notify ID change, I don't think so we are using it anymore. As I told you, like this is the same code from my previous example. So I'll just remove it. Okay. Now pass. we are passing edited fields to the update contact Apex controller. So here we are using update contact function and we are passing the updated data there. Okay. And this log, we are just having updated result. I'll remove this log as well as it is not needed. And we are displaying a success message contact updated. Okay. After that, I'm just having a refresh Apex. Uh, clear all draft values in the data table. Okay. So this will just refreshing the custom component what we are having as a data table okay so here we don't have that refresh view api yet and uh, without refresh view api guys if you will try to run this component then the custom component will refresh but the standard one is not going to refresh because for custom we are already having refresh apex and all those things so it will be refreshing for sure but the standard components what we are having on the page that is not gonna refresh automatically okay now to 
make it refresh for standard components as well what you can do is you can use refresh events for that uh, refresh view apis okay so what you need to do is you just need to simply import it like refresh event from lightning refresh okay so we have imported it now you just need to dispatch this event whenever you want your standard components whenever you want to notify your standard components that something has changed due to a, uh, due to a custom component and now you have to refresh your data so for that maybe we can call it before this refresh apex so here i'll do uh, trigger refresh view apis and here we'll do this dot dispatch event new mm, event name refresh event and semicolon okay so that is the only thing you need to add just to notify your standard page and uh, get the refresh data now let me deploy it once so that i can show you the output okay it is deployed now now let me go back to my page i'll refresh it so here i'll go to the same component again here you can see contact one and contact two the same data you are having here on the related list as well now if i will try to update it let's i'll make it contact three and contact four and if I'll click on save, on the right side, if you'll notice the spinner and the data got refreshed in the standard things, right? So uh, that's how you can, you know, refresh the standard components. You can notify them whenever you're doing some changes in your lightning web component or in any custom component to refresh their content without reloading the or without hard reloading the page, right? So guys, that is it for today. As I told you, I'll be having the complete code on my blog, which is salesforcecode.com. So if you need it, the link of that uh, code snippet will be in the description of this video. And if you like today's video, guys, a subscribe to the channel will be awesome. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.